Can you all see me? Can you all hear me? Good. Okay, I'm going. No, um, right. I'm going to switch into dad mode, and I'm going to tell you all off. I'm not really going to tell you all off. Just going to give you an overview of some things that I've noticed in the last couple of years. Uh, I started contracting about three, four years ago, and I've, I've run into a lot of developers who are rude would be an understatement. Um, so I want to talk about empathy, sympathy, and compassion, and why it's required for the work that we do. Um, so. I want to really, really quickly want to start with a quick note for our, for any neurodivergent friends that we have. Um, there are certain um, traits about a person. I'm not trying to draw any kind of. I'm using the wrong words, and I know I'm using the wrong words. I'm not using them um, to upset anyone. This is through unintentional ignorance. There are certain traits that people can have where they can't recognize emotions um, wonderfully, and this is not. I'm not attempting to out them or shame them or anything like that. Um, for people who have those uh, conditions or traits, there are a lot of very smart people out there who can help you to identify emotions in other people. Please go and speak to them. I'm not smart enough to be able to talk about that. So I just want to put that out from the very beginning. I'm not trying to be horrible to anyone, right? So I always like to start my talks with this quote, and that is um, from Yamaoka Teshu. He was a, a swordsman from ancient, uh, from 1700s Japan, so like when the samurai were no longer useful. Um, and the full quote is something like, do not assume that this is all there is. Um, wonderful teachings exist. The sword is unfathomable. And by the sword, he means whatever it is that you're studying. There's always going to be something new that you can learn, even if, it, if it's within your area of expertise or indeed outside of your area of expertise. I've been doing a lot of re reading over the last two years outside of development that I've brought into development. Things like uh, learning about... Uh, the Marie Kondo technique, which is tidying up after yourself. Well, guess what? That's that's standard sort of solid and clean architecture and clean code, right? You could bring that into your own um, to, uh, your own practice. So that's why it's kind of I like to start with something like this. Um, so I want to talk about empathy really quickly. Um, empathy. There's a brilliant talk by Brené Brown, which this is all HTML. It's all on GitHub. You can grab the code, and all of my notes are in comments in the HTML. But there are four qualities that make up empathy, and that is um, looking at someone and reacting without any kind of prejudgment, so not judging anyone for how they are presenting themselves to the world. Um, it's, 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 so it's no judgment. It's, uh, I'm going to have to check my notes. Sorry, I changed all of this on the way down here. So I come, in, I come down today. There is, uh, so it's perspective taking, no judgment, recognizing and responding with... Um, with relevant emotion. So recognizing the emotion in the person and responding in a, in a relevant and caring way. Um, and it, it's all about feeling with people. And why is this important? Well, you know, our users are the people who are going to report bugs. And we're, you know, a lot of people sort of fly off the handle. Oh, I can't believe my system is perfect and you've broken it and it's all your fault. Well, guess what? I'm going to skip to the end with what I'm about to say. It's never the user's fault, right? Is it your fault if you walk up to a, a crossing and you hit a button and you get a zap? No, it's not your fault. It's not the user's fault if they push a button and bring down your production server. Right? Um, what empathy isn't is pity and sympathy and knowing about them but without caring. Pity is when you, when you sort of, you, you look at them and you go, well, uh, I hope it gets better, see ya. Right? And I've seen so many developers do that. Sympathy is kind of the same. It's accepting that there is a pain and hoping that it will go away eventually. And, um, Compassion is, is empathy and sympathy together. Empathy is all about caring about the user. We write user stories, right? The way that we develop our and design our software, we go, as a user, I'd like to X so that I can Y. There's a, there should be absolutely no technical detail in those user stories. You're talking about, as the user, I want to put myself in the shoes of the user and do this thing. And so that's why you need to, you need to understand the struggle of what the user is doing. Because the, the thing is that, that the, the software is a tool. I'll come on to that in a minute. But what it, so I've talked about empathy. I've talked about uh, sympathy. What is compassion? Compassion is, and it's in pseudocode here. I've tried to make it Pythonistic because I've been doing Python a lot recently. It's empathy or sympathy and a desire to relieve that suffering. Doctors know this all the time. You, you talk to a doctor or a, a nurse or any kind of medical practitioner, they know this. And our, our jobs as developers, we may not realize it, but our jobs as developers is to facilitate people, to allow people to do things. Um, and, um, and this is why we need compassion in our, in our, um, in our business. Because 
There's a, this is a quote from Dylan Beatty from an episode of, I'm shilling my own show, but from the episode of the Don't Echo podcast. I interviewed him at, um, at NDC in London in 2019, just before the whole world went wobbly. He shared this story with me about um, someone he'd been talking to who was applying to be a lawyer. They'd just gone through law school and there's a 24 hour period when you can apply to be a lawyer. If you don't get your application in during that 24 hour period, you gotta wait till next year. And so there's people who at two o'clock in the morning are crying because the software isn't working because it's damaging their chance at being a lawyer. This is something that they've tried to do for their entire lives. I don't wanna make it too horrible for you, but this is what we're putting out there. For real, and no ref is just that, it doesn't matter. It's a no reference exception, it's a stack overflow, it'll work, just don't put in minus three. Well, the user doesn't know that. Right? And when they put in minus three, maybe it's a legitimate thing, maybe they're being malicious, they're gonna break it and then they're gonna be up at two o'clock in the morning crying because you're stopping them from doing what they wanna do. And not only that, your boss, right? Your boss doesn't, you, I've been saying this a lot recently, your boss doesn't care how you did it, just that you did it. Your boss doesn't care how the button works, so long as when a user pushes that button, they get $50. That's all they care about. So you could just hard code that all in. As long as it works, it works. But you also need to think a bit from the, the user's perspective. If it doesn't work, what kind of pain are they gonna be in? And the thing to remember is that a lack of compassion is almost baked in. I've put here uh, users with a silent L. In, at MIT in the 1960s, when they were first sort of developing multi-user technologies, the people who ran the systems referred to users as users with a silent L. Right? You start talking about people like that, you've immediately lost compassion for them. You immediately don't care about them. Whether you mean to or not, you immediately do it. I've worked with people who have called users stupid and idiots and, and have confessed that they are the best developers in the world and it's the users that hold them back. If you, if you have this little contempt for these people, that's going to come out in your everyday language, not just when you're bantering and being silly and talking about what you're doing. You're going to react like that when they report something that's really wrong with your software. And so you really, you kind of need to put yourself in their shoes. And the problem is, like I say, it's almost baked in. There's this, if we travel back far enough, there is sort of like a stereotype for developers, you know, the nerdy, anti-social. Well, we're not that anymore. We're not anti-social. We're all really social. The people in this room, we've all been chatting and t telling stories and telling jokes. The people online will be chatting and telling stories and making jokes in the comments. We're not anti-social. We don't need to keep that trope up. I, I say we ditch that trope and just say, look, this is us. This is the 21st century developer. We're not antisocial. We care about people. And Linus Torvalds. Now, okay, yes, Linus Torvalds has in the past said a lot of horrible things, and I don't trust everything he says. And I'm making sweeping statements, but he, this year, he said a project without a user is pointless. Doesn't matter what you've written. If somebody isn't using the code you've written, doesn't need to exist. And so with that in mind, the user pays your wages. Even if you're doing it open source and you're making some money on, like you're trading on, hey, I'm this open source developer and I've, you know, I create loads of content and you know, I go do paid gigs to do talks or write books. You're still relying on the code to bring in that stuff, right? But software is a tool. It's one of the many tools, right? We've all been playing around with our phones all day. Well, everything on there is a tool. This, this laptop has a web browser. It's a tool. It's a brilliant piece of kit. All of that stuff over there that's doing the live streaming for us, it's a wonderful piece of kit. Someone or a large amount of someone's have gotten together and said, this is how it should work. And it should always reduce that complexity. The example I gave earlier on of walking up to the, the traffic lights and pushing a button so you can cross the street, that is doing the reduction of the complexity of stopping the traffic and signaling to everyone else that you want to cross the street. Like I said, if I walked up and pushed the button and got zapped, it's not my fault. It may not be the fault of the person who, in, who installed that button, but it's certainly not my fault. I got zapped. Whereas if it was a software development context, it would be my fault because I pushed the button. Well, you know, if you push the button, it's raining, you're going to get zapped. Well, no, it should be designed so that when I push the button and it's raining, I won't get zapped. It should never get in the way. Software shouldn't get in the way. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. My, my family all make fun of me for this because I'll give something two tries. First try I get it wrong, that's on me because I don't understand how it's meant. You know, if I'm using some software and it goes wrong, that's probably on me because it's new software to me. Second time, 
I don't have time for badly written software. So I, and, and all of my family make fun of me. They say, oh, here he comes. I haven't got time for badly written software. But it shouldn't get in the way. The story I told you that I showed you earlier on about someone crying at 2 o'clock in the morning because their career is putting on hold. That software getting in the way of them achieving what they want to do. Can you imagine if you were, oh gosh, can you imagine if you were using a screwdriver and it somehow got in the way and stopped you from doing whatever it was you were doing with a screwdriver, right? It shouldn't cause you any kind of emotional or physical, it shouldn't cause you any physical pain. Hopefully the software you're making people isn't causing physical pain, but emotional pain shouldn't be there. It should just be click, 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 do this, do that, and it works. Now, yes, I know the systems we build are built on systems that are incomplete, which are built on systems which are incomplete, and it's turtles all the way down. But you have to try and do your best to make sure your bit, and comparatively, that whole slice, your bit is the last bit. You can do loads of stuff here to try and make sure that it doesn't fall over there, it doesn't cause them pain. And you must always try to design that software. And I talk about design, I'm talking about the code, the UI, the UX, all of it, top to bottom needs to be designed with compassion because without that user, you're not getting paid. Right? I, it, it boggles my mind that we treat the user, or, or rather, we as a community of developers, not everyone in this room, not everyone who's watching live, we as a community treat the people that we do the stuff for with such contempt. Oh, well, my software would be brilliant if it weren't for the users. If it weren't for the users, then your software wouldn't exist. So what do we do? My, my personal opinion is that we need to, every time something breaks, every time something goes wrong, we need to have an open, frank, honest uh, discussion about the software that we've built. And it needs to be, we all talk about no blame, there's no blame, there's no blame. Well, guess what? In every company, there's going to be some blame. Someone's going to get blamed. Oh, Jamie pushed to production and it was broken. What a wally, right? Yeah, okay, let's get past that, right? But you need to talk about every time the user says, this has caused me pain, this has caused me an issue, this has stopped working. It's, it's not helping me to achieve what I need to do. You need to take a step back and say, okay, right, let's talk about the design of the code, of the UI. Maybe, maybe we're building stuff for people who are colorblind, who are maybe red, blue, colorblind, and we've, we've made the danger button red. Well, they, may, they, they may have trouble perceiving that, right? You need to talk about the execution. Is, is, is it being run in a way that the user can, can interact with it. Is it accessible? You may not know, but like the percentage of people who use computers who have accessibility issues, maybe they, they need, um, you know, maybe they are they're blind, colorblind, they may be deaf, they may, there's all sorts of loads, of, and not just the stuff you can see, you know, blindness is a disability you can see. I mentioned it earlier on, only in passing, because I didn't want any of our neurodivergent friends to get upset, but if you, you know, you may have certain accessibility concerns if you are neurodivergent, if you're autistic, if you have ADHD. You need to really try and come up with ways to get around these things or to then sit and go, well, actually, our software is about selling books, so maybe we don't need to worry about blind people. And you make that choice, but then you make it really obvious somewhere in the software to the users. Hey, it, we've detected you have accessibility options turned on our software isn't going to work brilliantly, we'll do our best. Because then you're making it clear to the user. You're not just hiding it and saying, well, we'll just pretend, right? We'll just pretend that, 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 that we care about the user. We'll just pretend. And then again, you need to have it without blame. You need to not be blaming people. You need not to be blaming the user. You need to take that contempt that we as a community, again, not the people here, but the we as a community, we need to take that contempt and shift it away from the user. It is not the user's fault. If they push the button and it dropped a database, they don't know what the button's gonna do, unless it literally says drop database, don't click it, Jamie, because you're a Wally. They're gonna click that button. Someone is gonna click that button. It's not the user's fault. If they click that button, unless they are a malicious user, right? If they are trying to do Johnny tables or whatever it is and drop the tables, then yes, that's, all, that's, that's where you kind of can blame the user. But if it's an average person who's using the software, they click that drop database button, but you've served that drop database button to them and you've allowed them to drop the database without challenging them, without prompting them for authorization, without prompting them for anything. That's on you. That's not on the user. And so, yeah, I am kind of telling you off, but it's just because my experience of the last three, four years of dealing with people like this, it's really starting to grate on me. And I, I like people. I don't want to have contempt for people. 
I think it's, it's quite cool that we have such a, a, wonderful, a wonderful world in which we live in and a wonderful group of people that we can all get together with. Our industry is fantastic. And we are more accepting than most other industries. There are people in our industry who, wouldn't, who would perhaps have to hide certain things about their personality, about their whatever, whatever it is about them. They would have maybe have to hide that from other industries. We're like, come on in. No, come on. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's got a seat at the table. But you also have to include the user. Because if you're not including the user, then you're cutting off the people who are paying your bills. You're cutting off the people who are paying your bills, then where are you going to live? We take that contempt we have for the user, throw it out the window. I think that's the end of it. Oh, no, okay, yeah. It's never the user's fault. It might not be your fault, you personally, but it's the team who made the decision to go, don't worry about it, we'll serve the drop database button and we'll just deal with it because it's a technical debt, right? And I fully understand that there will be times when you have to ship not so great software to get out the door. But then it's your, your responsibility as the team to take that on board and say, we've shipped this thing, it will cause us problems, it is not the user's fault, it's our fault for making that, for making that, um, that decision. Because the user doesn't know what the side effects are. And I mean, if you go to, I'm sure uh, Dan can share the links, but this is, this is a bunch of links to resources that I've used to sort of develop this up. Um, there's, th <laughs> the bottom three of those links are links to stuff that I've done. There's um, an episode of .NET Core that I talked about DNC episode 48 with uh, Dylan Beatty. There's a blog post that I wrote about this really short blog post that essentially is the core idea behind this. It's never the user's fault. Get past that. And the third one is an episode of Tabs and Spaces, which is another podcast that I'm on, where we talked about how we have this contempt for the user. But the, the, the top three are better resources because I'm not involved in them, right? Um, I would definitely uh, recommend taking on the Brené Brown talk because she talks about what it's like to be in that position and to have people go, well, I hope it gets better, see ya. Well, at least it isn't this. Well, at least it isn't that. You don't want to be told, well, at least, at least it isn't this when something's going wrong, right? You break your leg and somebody says, well, at least you've got another leg. It doesn't make your leg get better, <laughs> right? But we do that all the time in software. Well, you know, at least it works sometimes. Well, that doesn't help me, does it? But anyway, yeah, g definitely give those top three a, a try. And if you, if you are interested, definitely read books by Brené Brown and Simon Sinek because they are fantastic. Um, and they talk about all sorts of stuff that are not to do with development, but you can bring to your development uh, practice every day. And with that, that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much.